Welcome to the Soul Health Mentor Podcast with Nadia Kraus. Learn how to move your awareness out of your mind and into your heart so you can embody your divinity, experience joyous peace of mind, and create your most vibrant life by opening to receive your soul's sacred medicine. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Soul Health Mentor Podcast. Today, I am welcoming Susan Batson that was on Soul Health Mentor on episode number 79. And Susan Batson wrote a book with Eliora. It's called Drink from the Well. And we had such a wonderful and great time in episode number 79 that we just decided we're going to do this again. Welcome, Susan. Thank you so much for inviting me back. I'm very excited to be here. Yes, I am so looking forward to learning more about creating a light shield today. Excellent. Yes, that's, I'm excited about teaching it to you. So I just want to let people know that the tool we're talking about in today's class is in the book, Drink from the Well, and my pseudonym is Eliora. So you won't find the book under my name. You need to type in Eliora and you'll see it. And I just happen to have a copy just so you know what it looks like. Yeah. Um so what we're going to do today is I'm going to talk you through what a light shield is. It's one of the tools that's described in the book, when to use it. And then we're going to actually give you time and guidance to doing it yourself in your own time. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love that. Okay. So what I what the book is about and what I work on is fear. And so much of our lives is controlled by fear. And we know that fear is in control because Every time you're feeling a negative emotion or thinking a negative thought or behaving in a hurtful or destructive way to yourself or to someone else, it's fear. That tells you fear is present and fear is in control. And a lot of the fear is our own. And quite a bit of the fear that we are expressing belongs to someone else. We're reacting to someone else's stuff, mm -hmm. right? You meet some, you're in a good mood. You meet someone who snaps your head off. And now you're in a bad mood, right? Mm -hmm. Or someone is unkind to you or or um, doesn't doesn't follow through and, and uh, attacks you. Or let me give you another example. Someone says they're going to do something and then they don't, right? Or someone blames you, right? Then all of a sudden you're responding with fear. And you know you're responding with fear because you're getting upset. You're feeling hurt. You're feeling attacked. Um, maybe you just want to run and hide. Maybe you want to attack back. That's telling you that their stuff is triggering fear in you. Mm -hmm. And it happens all the time. Correct. Okay. And so this tool, I call it a light shield, helps protect you, gives you space from other people's stuff so you're not taking it on. And so that you can actually have compassion for what they're going through. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense so far? Um, and what's so exciting about this tool is you can use it in the present moment, like if someone does something rude to you at this moment, and you can do it for like memories from the past where people, when you think of that memory, it upsets you inside. You can create light shields for the people involved in that memory, the ways they're expressing their fear and neutralize it. So you're no longer carrying that pain with you anymore into the future. Yes. So. Um, let me see if there's anything else I need to tell you about light shields. They're very simple. They're as simple as riding a bicycle. But as we all know, riding a bicycle takes some practice, right? It takes maybe some pointers and some training, someone running behind the bicycle and holding it up so you don't fall over. And that's what I'm going to do today. Okay, I'm going to walk you through it and just um, give you the guidance so that you can do it yourself. All right, so the first thing I need to teach you before I can teach you the light shield is very basic, but it's very central to doing the work. And that is focusing on your exhale. Mm -hmm. Okay, because focusing on your exhale allows you to stop thinking and allows you to settle into your body and it allows you to start to let go. Those are the three aspects of it. And what takes making a light shield out of the ordinary way we process and try to think things through and forgive people when they're mean to us. Those are all thinking processes, right? We're like they're mind games. I forgive them because they were, you know, that's a mind game. We want to take it from a mind game into something that is deep within you 
and transformative within the body. Oh. And to do that, we have to use the breath. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I want everyone, if you would like to, just inviting you to close your eyes mm. and to take a nice deep breath in and out. And we're just going to start by focusing on the breath in general, the inhale and the exhale, just noticing the sensations. Take a few breaths, noticing the inhale and the exhale. And now we're going to switch it up a little bit. We're going to continue just to notice the inhale, which means just telling yourself in your head, here I am inhaling. And when it comes to the exhale, I want you to completely immerse yourself in the sensations of breathing out, the sound of the air, the vibration of the air as it passes out of your nose or mouth, the movement of your chest down and in. We're going to notice the inhale because it's happening. And we're going to put our 100% of our focus on the exhale. So take a nice deep breath in. And I want you to completely immerse yourself in the sensations of breathing out. The sound, the feeling, the movement. And take a few more breaths, focusing on the exhale. Noticing the inhale is happening and immersing yourself in the sensations of breathing out. As you focus on your exhale, I want you to notice what you're feeling in your body. Becoming quieter and more peaceful. Perhaps you find yourself thinking. That's okay. If you find yourself thinking, just gently bring your focus back to the exhale. When you focus on the exhale, you're doing two things. You're dropping out of your head and into your body, and you are letting go. Because what's, that's what exhaling is, isn't it? It's letting go of the air that you have inhaled. It's also letting go of the emotions you're holding on to. It's just a process of releasing that allows you to drop down deeper into yourself. So now that we've learned that, now we can learn how to make a light shield. Any questions so far, Nadia? How does that feel to you? I just wanted to say thank you. It is such a simple exercise, but in everyday life, we literally forget to breathe. And right. we're just always in the speed, speed, speed. And the minute that you started the exercise, I'm like, oh, this feels so good. And and of course I had thoughts too, but it was right. body was calming down. And then the thought that came is like, why don't you do this more often? <laughs> Yeah, I know, I know. It's, it, and what am I, when I work with people, I say, do it five minutes a day. Yeah. Set a timer and just do it five minutes. Yeah. Because every time you do it and every time you bring your thinking back to the breath, you're teaching yourself you are more than your thoughts. Yes. You're more than your emotions and you're dropping down and connecting to that quiet place within you. Yes. Which is key to living a different life, a, a life from light rather than darkness. Yes. So to make a light shield, what we're going to do is I'm going to invite each of you to think of someone who triggers fear in you, who upsets you. Everyone has multiple people in their life that upsets them. Just choose one. It doesn't matter who. Okay. I'm just going to give everyone a chance to think of someone who upsets them. They do things. They say things that trigger fear in them, that trigger them to be upset. And now... The next question is, what are they doing that's upsetting you? How are they upsetting you? Is it what they're saying? Is it what they're doing or not doing? Is it their attitude or how they look when they're interacting with you? I want you to identify three things that they are doing or saying or emoting or their attitude, their facial expression, 
that is upsetting you, that you notice triggers you. And maybe you just want to jot them down. Three things they're doing that it's upsetting you. And I want you to be specific in how. I don't want you to say they're being mean. I want, how are they being mean? Be specific. The more specific you are, the better your results. Susan, mm -hmm. may I offer myself as an example? Sure, go for it. Because what I noticed as you prompted us Mm -hmm. is that even though I continuously to do inner work, I mean, that's what I call soul health, to take care right. of every level of us, body, mind, heart, spirit, soul. I'm human. So yeah, there, of course. There, and I have somatic experiences locked into my body. So since we last spoke in the last interview, I have done some work and I've released some. But what is absolutely fascinating is the moment I go there, it will get that fight and flight response in my body going. I feel my heart pounding Oh and yeah, back to the memory and I go back and then I'm right there, even though it's nowhere. It's yes. nowhere. And so I just want to offer myself in the sense, not offer myself, but I, I will be an example of how to do this work to help the listener do their work. And the three things that mm -hmm. I found in what upsets me is, disrespectful treatment okay now i'm going to ask you how how are they showing their disrespect be specific mm -hmm. the voice the so the, what's, what what with the voice the specifically voice. what with the voice so so this has to do specifically and i'm just gonna be really like an yeah. this has to do with my corporate health coaching career and that setting which was okay. a very toxic setting it doesn't matter. We don't care about that. What I want you to tell me is how were they disrespectful? What in their voice told you that they were disrespecting you? Hey, hey, health coach lady, not knowing my name. Okay, so they didn't know your name. Note that down. Yes. That's specific. You need to get that specific. Oh. Do you understand what I'm saying? Just saying they were disrespectful uh -huh. doesn't touch what was upsetting you. Yes. They talked down to you, didn't they? Yes. They didn't know your name. Mm -hmm. Right. You weren't important enough for them to learn your name. Correct. What else? What else upset you? Thank you. So this is why I'm literally. Yeah. I yeah. Know that. I did not know. OK, so they did um, not know my name. Wasn't important enough to know my name. Or to ask what it was to learn it. It was also um, a power thing. How? If I don't know your name. Oh, yeah. But we don't have to understand that. Yeah. So the key for light shields is you don't need to know anything about the person. Uh -huh. You don't have to understand why they're doing it. Uh -huh. All you need to do is understand what is upsetting you. Okay. okay. That's the focus. So they're not learning your name. Mm -hmm. What else are they doing that's upsetting you? So how do I put body language into words? So what were they doing? Were they turning their backs on you? Were they rolling their eyes? Were they sneering at you? What were they doing? Rolling. They're walking away? Rolling their eyes, huffing and puffing. Good. Write those down. <laughs> yes. Okay. Good, good. Okay. And, right. and the body language like of leaning back. Okay. They leaned away from you. So I'm going to write these down. Yes. Rolled eyes. Rolled eyes. Um, lean back. Huffing, huffing and, and puffing. Huffing. Not and huffing at you. Not knowing name. What else? One more thing they were doing. One more thing. How are they showing their disrespect for you? So this, you'll, you'll correct me. So I'm just. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. So this, this is obviously my perception and my memory. That does it, That's all that matters. It doesn't matter what yeah. anyone else thinks. Yeah. This is a you working on you. Yes. So it doesn't matter what anything else is. Yes. Okay. So what do you got? Using me as a garbage can. Okay. How do they do that? Complaining about how this wellness program that I'm supposed to facilitate is a bunch of crap and how it doesn't, it's not useful. They don't want to do it. Okay. Hearing all the negativity. So they're just complaining and, 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 and pouring negativity onto you. Yeah. Okay. All right. As if it's your fault. Yeah. Right. 
Okay. So those that's a good start, isn't it? Okay. So I'm just going to give, let's give the, the listeners a chance to come up with their own list now that they understand what they're looking for here. We're looking for specifics, not generalizations, right? If I tell you that someone um, hurt my, like my son hurt my feelings, that doesn't tell you what. That's me interpreting what he did, right? Well, how did he hurt my feelings? He left wet towels on the bathroom floor, even after I asked him consistently to pick them up. Okay, that is what you're looking for. You want specifics. So let's give our listeners just a few moments to come up with their list. It could be words, it could be actions, it could be feelings, attitudes, body language, anything they're doing that upsets you. And it doesn't matter why. We don't care. All right. So what we're going to do now is I want you to think of those moments with those people when they were huffing and puffing at you and not knowing your name. And I want you to check in with your body, not your head, but with your body to look at the tension in your body, because that's how we express our emotions. We might not even be aware of how upset we are in our head, but we know when our body is tight and tense, maybe we're having trouble taking a deep breath. Maybe our stomach is churning. How tight are you in your body on a scale from one to 10? One is completely relaxed and 10 is so agitated you can hardly sit down. When you think about that moment with those people, how much tension are you holding in your body? Would well, you like me to answer? Specifically? Yeah, yeah. You can be. You're, you're our guinea pig. Yes. So. Oh. Yeah, as soon as I, I was fine when we started the interview, you know, what do you know? yeah, and then, and then I started, I brought that back. And now it, like my whole neck just feels like rigid and tight. And so what, what, what number would you give it? Ten. Give me a number. Ten. Okay. So that's our starting place. Mm -hmm. And we're going to use that as our check in mm -hmm. for how well is the light shield working? Okay. So the light shield is really, really simple. The light shield is three sentences and you're going to, it's only three sentences. And the deal is you say them out loud because saying them out loud changes what would be a thinking process into a body process. You're hearing it, you're saying it, you're feeling the vibration, right? Mm -hmm. So you can't just think it. You have to say it out loud. And the three sentences are, this is blank and their role filled with fear. And this is this person and their role overwhelmed with fear. And this is that person in their role expressing their fear by, okay, that's the three sentences. And it's interesting because the role the person can be playing can change, mm -hmm. right? Let's say I'm making a light shield for my husband. And sometimes I might make a light shield for Paul, my husband. I might make a light chill for Paul, my traveling companion, right? I might make a light chill for Paul, my co-parent, depending on what's going on. What role is he playing when I'm getting upset? Because it changes, doesn't it? It affects how, the, uh, how they are impacting you. So in your case, it would be this, uh, these are the people I worked with at blah, 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 or as a life, as a body coach, right? I would say in my mind, when you were going through, I would say, yeah. this is the participant of the wellness program. But there were multiple ones, weren't they? Yes. These were the participants of the wellness program mm -hmm. filled with fear. Mm -hmm. And so what you're saying with those three sentences is this person is feeling fear and the fear is filling them up. Yes. That's the first sentence. Second sentence, this fear is now starting to overwhelm them and take control. 
And then the third sentence is, this is the way that fear is being expressed. Because all negative behaviors, feelings, words, thoughts are ultimately caused by fear. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing here is we're attributing their darkness, their negativity to their fear. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see what happens when we do. Okay. So I want you to say those three sentences. These are the participants in the wellness program filled with fear. These are the participants of the wellness program filled with fear. These are the participants in the wellness program overwhelmed with fear. These are the participants of the wellness program overwhelmed with fear. And these are the participants in the wellness program expressing their fear. And these are the participants of the wellness program expressing their fear. By not learning my name. By not learning my name. Now I want you just to breathe. Focus on your exhale for a moment. By rolling their eyes. By rolling their eyes. By leaning away from me. By leaning away from me. By huffing at me. By huffing at me. By complaining to me about the program. By complaining to me about the program. Focusing on your exhale. Just giving yourself some space to hear those words. To recognize it. And I want you to notice what's starting to shift in you. Thinking about these participants in the wellness program and where you are right now, what has started to shift? It's amazing. The minute we started with each sentence, I just noticed my whole neck. Just now it's back to like there's, it's just relaxed. Thinking about these people now from where you are, Thank how you. do you feel about them? Well, I want you to think about them. Check in with yourself right now, okay? And notice what you're feeling inside as you think about them. So now it just feels soft. Yeah. Soft. Like it it's, have, it's not a burden for you to carry or think about it anymore, is it? It doesn't have anything to do with me. It doesn't. <laughs> and that's the key. That's the key of the work, uh, of the of the light shield is it makes it their problem. It makes it their issue. It has nothing to do with you. Something that you were taking so personally, mm -hmm. you can see has no effect on you at all. Mm -hmm. And when you think about these people, I wonder if you're even starting to feel a little compassion for them. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. here they are, they're filled with fear. And this is the way their fear is getting in the, their way. Mm -hmm. Can you feel that? What I'm sensing right now, because it's it's been a while. It's been years. Yeah, it's been yeah, years. yeah. That's how affected we are in our nervous systems. Um, so I'm feeling, in the best of ways, very detached, very neutral, mm -hmm. very yeah. peaceful, and just my heart is soft. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that was a group of people that you don't really have any interactions with. Imagine doing that with like a parent who has hurt you. Yes. Or a partner who has, because it's impossible to go through life without other people's darkness and negativity and fear negatively impacting us. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing every time we create a light shield is we're unburdening ourselves from their fear. We're taking their fear and saying, this is yours. It's not mine. Yes. So I've worked with people who have had parents that have died many years ago and they're their negative attitudes, let's say, towards women were still impacting how they thought about themselves. Mm -hmm. And we created light shields for the father that had died all those years ago who had these terrible attitudes towards women mm -hmm. who felt like women were inferior and, and just there to serve. And as we created the light shields, her ability to connect with men was shifting and changing because she was no longer carrying his the, her father's stuff. Mm -hmm. It was his. It wasn't hers. Yes. And she could be free of it for the first time in her life. Wow. And it's that simple. Yes, it is. There's so much to be found in our mother and father bonding. Oh, my God. Yeah. Children, my husband and I, we were just talking about it because we are helpless. We are absolutely codependent on our parents. We cannot say at nine years old, I'm going to move out and have my own apartment and live my own life. Right. So we have all this stuff that we carry that isn't even ours. It's not ours. 
And that's what this tool does is it allows you to start, start letting go of all that's not yours. Yes. I was talking to my mom this morning. I'm like, mom, I want you to start thinking of memories from your past. My mom's 88. Mm -hmm. um, where you're upset. It still brings up pain in you. It still upsets you. And these memories involve other people. And I said, I want you to start making light shields because you don't want to carry this pain anymore further into your life. You want to unburden yourself from it so that you're not holding grudges. So that you're not holding yourself back and restricting yourself because of other people's darkness and their fears. And so that's what it does. I love it ultimately that. Left, frees you. Yeah. I love that you did that. What did, how did she respond? She she was well, first she's like, I don't know. I think it's all gone. And I was like, Mom, I want you to think about this person. And she's like, Oh yeah, okay, it's still there. It's still there. All right. So then the next part was, okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. And so I'll, you know, I'll go down and visit my parents and I'll help my mom make her light shields. And each time we do the work, she's happier and lighter and freer. She's not carrying all that darkness with her yeah. as she gets older. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. I love that. It, this is, and this is the beauty of your work, of, of the tools and the processes you teach. Right. are so simple. They are. I've taught them to five-year-olds. Yes. Okay. Because you can imagine if you didn't take on the negativity of others, how lovely and simple your life would be. Mm -hmm. So for me, there's times where I'm not even aware I'm taking it on. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, I'll walk away from someone. I'll be like, whoa, I can feel this tightness in me in my chest that wasn't there before. What just happened? Mm -hmm. And I'll be like, wow, I picked up something from, I took on something. Let me just think. Sometimes it's passive aggressiveness, yes. which takes a little bit of seeing to understand what they're doing that's upsetting you. And as soon as I see it and feel it, I create a light shield. And then it's theirs and not mine. Oh, that is powerful. And that you just said that you are teaching five-year-olds this like you have yes. this is the potential of your work and I remember you saying in our last interview that you also do zoom workshops right you do oh I do yeah zoom workshops so tell us a little bit more about that how does that come about how how do so I just I just led four zoom workshops in the last one a month on creating light shields mm -hmm. and so um I'm going to start a new series on seeing your own fears and releasing your own fears workshops on that. They're day workshops. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so um, I have a website, um, Eliora's journey. That's Eliora with an S journey.com. And um, I'm going to uh, ask my web designer to put a, um, a place where people can put their email addresses in if they're interested in working with me or hearing about the workshops because I'll put you on my mailing list and let you know when they're happening. And eventually I'll actually have the workshops available online that people can sign up for. They have their in real time. They're not recorded. So yeah. I work with people and I have to keep the class sizes to a certain size because I need to be able to engage with the people in the, ro the group rather than just, you know, having this massive number of people that I can't personally engage with. So usually it's up to 30 people. And it's usually two and a half hours, three hours. Wow. And I walk people through and teach them the skills to um, creating light shields or finding their own fears. And an, another important component is that we don't use light shields because it triggers fear in us. We're afraid of changing perhaps the status quo. If we create a light shield, we're afraid we're going to change the status quo, the relationship with the other person. We're afraid of, sometimes we're afraid of letting go of our grudges because mm -hmm. we believe our grudges are keeping us safe. There's sometimes fear that gets in the way of using a tool. Wow. So in the workshops, I go through the fears with people mm -hmm. as a group and we let them all go together mm -hmm. so that you're able to move forward without those fears getting in the way. Yes. Yes. Oh, thank you so much for explaining that, how you set up the workshop so the listeners know this. And then I will obviously put it all in the show notes again. And you've already mentioned it. And it's wonderful that they can just sign up to an email list to be informed. And it was absolutely fantastic. And I, I'll, am I, would you mind um, spelling out the three sentences for us once more? Definitely. So I'm going to I'll, I'll give you the three sentences and I'll give you the three keys to making a successful light shield. The three sentences are, 
and they're in the book, okay? It's all spelled out in the book. This is blank, the name and their role, filled with fear. This is blank and their role, overwhelmed with fear. This is blank and their role, expressing their fear by. So it's filled with fear, overwhelmed with fear, and expressing their fear by. Those are the three sentences. You must say them out loud. Okay. It will not work. I'm telling you guys. Trust me. Give it a shot. The, sec the, the important components are you must be specific in how what they are doing that's upsetting you. Specifically, how are they doing it? Okay. I once made light shields for someone and I kept doing it and doing it and it wasn't really hitting home until I remembered that this person, whenever I spoke, rolled their eyes. And then it was like, Whoa. oh my God. It was like, all of a sudden, the light, that was the thing that was really getting to me. The deal is you don't need to know why the other person's upset. That just gets in the way. This is only for you to help you understand and keep your space from someone else's darkness and fear. It's, to, it's your way of saying, hey, this is theirs. It's not part of me. Mm -hmm. So we don't care why they're doing it. Mm -hmm. We know why they're doing it. We know they're doing it because they're afraid. But we're not going to get into why they're afraid. And that's 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 not purpose of this. Okay. Some people like to go that route and it just distracts you. Yes. What And it doesn't matter why they're doing it. And it doesn't matter how petty it might feel to you that it bothers you. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you need to know how, specifically, how are they upsetting you? You must breathe. That last sentence when you're saying this, they're expressing their fear by, let's say they're rolling their eyes. Focus on your exhale and breathe. You got to give yourself time to process it. So take it in. They're expressing their fear by yelling at me. Breathe. They're expressing their fear by turning their back on me. Breathe. Because that takes it from an intellectual process to something in your body. You're focusing on your exhale and allowing it just to sink in. Okay? To make it a whole body experience rather than just a thinking experience. Yes. I love that you summarized for us because of what I could extract now. Because you were teaching me my own. Yeah. And it was a very human response to, to go into the story and to explain. Oh, yeah. Exactly. And then as you were teaching me, this voice or, or a sentence dropped in where it literally just said, just the facts. Just the you know what? That is my line. I just say that to everyone all the time. It's like, it's in Dragnet. Just the facts, ma'am. You know, do you remember Dragnet? Yes, Dragnet. There, there used to be a police chief who would always, sergeant, who always say, just the facts, ma'am. That's yeah. all I want is just the facts. <laughs> and, and that's literally what dropped in. So, because we, we create this emotional story around it because yeah. Hurt and we we were annoyed and we were like, ah, oh, I can't believe this is happening. And then it's just the facts. And then you help me gather just the facts. The facts. And then when you went checked in again, what number were you feeling in your body at this moment? When you think about those participants in the wellness program, what number are you feeling in your body now? When so, you think about them. So when we completed, it was yeah. the, the zero. Like it was all out. And now as, and I wonder why, and I'll just practice again. Yeah. So, so now when I check in, it's a two. So two is fine. Anything under like a four is fine. Let's say you do it and it's like a, it goes from a 10 to an eight. Mm -hmm. That all that means is it doesn't mean it hasn't worked. It means that you need to, to go back in and find other things that they're doing that's upsetting you. Ah, got it. Okay. There's some people that I've done that like 10 or 15 times to, to make sure, especially people that are really important to my life, where I've accumulated a lot of mm -hmm. reasons to be upset, mm -hmm. that I might just have to be like, okay, here we go again. Let's get the, a, a new list. What are they doing that I'm, that's upsetting me that I'm seeing now? It's not the same old list. Yes. It's not the huffing, the puffing, the rolling the eye. It's a new list. Yes. From where you are right now, what are you understanding that they're doing that's upsetting you? Yes. Creating a new list, creating a new light shield, checking in again. What's the number now? Maybe it's down to a seven. Okay, we're we'll moving that direction. Take a deep breath. Yes. Create a new list. Yes. Okay. Because for some people it's complicated. And sometimes you don't necessarily see in the beginning what's really upsetting you. 
Mm-hmm. You think it's the big things, but it's something small like rolling your eyes. Mm-hmm. I mean, I did all the little things, the, the other things that I thought were major, but they weren't cutting it. And it was the eyes that were just searing me to my heart because I felt like she was telling me I was stupid every time she did that. Yes. Yes. So you might just have to go revisit it multiple times. And once you've created a light shield, it's done. Wonderful. You might need to make another light shield about other new stuff that's come up, but that light shield's done. Wonderful. Okay. So- new stuff's going to come up. If you were still interacting with those people, you might be like, now they're what, you know, now they're, they're not even talking to me, whatever. Mm-hmm. And you make new light shields. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, As you were explaining that, because of course there were other things. They were like just ignoring appointments and just not communicating. And right. So I would so, that a new list. That's a new list. That's right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you say the three sentences out loud and then you breathe between each thing that you, item on your list to let it settle in, to, to really take it in. If I've had people who don't breathe, it doesn't work mm-hmm. because you're just, you're, you're not, you're not giving yourself a chance to catch up and to take it in and just let it settle before you move on. Yeah. And breathe out. Yes. Thank you so much for being here today, Susan. It was wonderful to have you. Thank you so much for inviting me. And I'm hoping that people are going to give it a try. It's um, extremely easy and it's incredibly powerful and effective. It's I've never, I've cleared out so much of my pain and, and my history using this technique. I use it, I probably use it a thousand, two thousand times over the last few years since I understood what I needed to do. And it's completely transformed my life. So I just hope some of your listeners will give it a try and see what it does for them. And what I'll just say, if a five-year-old and an 88-year-old can do it, so can you. That's correct. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to the Soul Health Mentor Podcast with Nadia Krauss. If you like what you heard, Please subscribe, rate, and review at Apple Podcasts or wherever podcasts are playing. 